and today I'm going to detail one of our body's master regulators of energy metabolism. It's something called PGC-1-alpha, and I've mentioned it plenty of times before, but I've never really gone into exactly what PGC-1-alpha specifically does. So let's get into that. PGC-1-alpha is induced in muscle during exercise, and PGC-1-alpha stimulates many of physical activity's best-known muscle benefits, like mitochondrial biogenesis, or the generation of new mitochondria, angiogenesis, the creation of new blood vessels from older, damaged ones, and also muscle fiber type switching, which is when muscle fiber converts to the more oxidative type 1 and 2A fibers, which favor fatty acid oxidative metabolism. You can think of this as a kind of necessary oxidation, or as I call it, necessary rust. This fatty acid oxidative metabolism then leads to a reduction of fat and triglyceride accumulation in muscle, which then increases insulin sensitivity, and one benefit of increased insulin sensitivity is definitely the increased uptake of glucose by insulin-sensitive tissues. We find PGC-1-alpha in large quantities in tissues where mitochondria are abundant and oxidative metabolism is active, like skeletal muscle, the heart, and our brown adipose tissue, or brown fat. And brown fat is one area where you can really see PGC-1-alpha's supportive influence. Because beyond exercise, PGC-1-alpha is strongly induced by exposure to extreme cold temperatures, and cold exposure also activates our mitochondria-dense brown fat, which then burns our unsightly white fat to maintain the body's core temperature. PGC-1-alpha also stimulates the release of irisin, a hormone produced by our muscles as we exercise. Irisin supports the production of brown fat also, while significantly increasing total body energy expenditure and inhibiting the further formation of fatty tissue. Muscle contraction produces heat as a byproduct of metabolism. And while all muscle produces heat, skeletal muscle, because of its enormous quantity, is the most thermogenic muscle in the body. The heart, which has a very high demand for energy as adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, derives most of its required ATP from fatty acid oxidation. And this is where PGC-1-alpha specifically helps the heart, because one of PGC-1-alpha's primary mechanisms of action is the increase in fatty acid oxidation that accompanies PGC-1-alpha's stimulation of mitochondrial biogenesis. Conversely, in a PGC-1-alpha deficient heart, the steep reduction in mitochondrial enzyme activity and decreased levels of ATP and the muscle contraction supportive phosphocreatine all translate to a greatly diminished response to exercise. Intermittent fasting, which also increases reliance on mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation, also activates PGC-1-alpha. In a nutrient deficient fasted state, Fat becomes the primary metabolic fuel, while glucose is conserved for the central nervous system. Under ample caloric intake, skeletal muscle is a major site for glucose deposition. Skeletal muscle takes up glucose using glucose transporters located in the cell membrane. PGC-1-alpha increases the expression of the insulin-sensitive glucose transporter 4, or GLUT4, in skeletal muscle. So consistently elevated PGC-1-alpha can really help to avoid age-related obesity, insulin resistance, and type 2 diabetes. While regular exercise and fasting are the best and easiest ways to maintain optimal levels of PGC-1-alpha, you can also support its production through maintaining optimal glutathione, and the best way to do this is through taking glutathione's direct precursor, N-acetylcysteine, or NAC. The critical postbiotic butyrate, which is made by our gut bacteria when we eat fiber, also induces PGC-1 activity in skeletal muscle and brown fat, and this then enhances fatty acid metabolism and is definitely a component in butyrate stimulation of thermogenesis, or the burning of caloric energy to generate heat, especially in fat tissues. And regularly taking the golden yellow alkaloid berberine supports the growth of butyrate producing bacteria in the gut. You can also activate PGC 1 alpha through regularly taking the original flushing form of niacin or vitamin B3, also known as nicotinic acid, because niacin, which activates the same receptor as butyrate, is also the backbone for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide or NAD, one of the body's most critical coenzymes that is also a primary fuel source for 
for sirtuins, the metabolic proteins that repair mitochondria, DNA, and telomeres. NAD is especially critical for activating sirtuin-1, which along with supporting insulin sensitivity and proper insulin secretion, also activates PGC1-alpha. I hope you can see now how critical PGC1-alpha is to maintain, especially as you get older, but also how amazingly easy it is to do that through regular exercise and, and regularly taking a few nutraceuticals. I hope this also illustrates for you why some oxidation is necessary for optimal muscle maintenance and how PGC1-alpha greatly facilitates that. Stay active. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.